is going to be the pedal. I want to see why. Gangstars grab themselves a Vox. Here's why. Because pedal is good against a lot of the counter picks Gangstars can pick. She's good against Grumpjaw. He's good. Or pedal is good against Grumpjaw. They can't pick Koshko Assassins because pedal is good against melee and very very flexible. Um, so I think here potentially like they can say they could be t picking up Samuel or something here. Yeah, Samuel, I don't think necessarily would be the best pick for them, but. I, th I feel like if they go Crystal Vox and then just mm -hmm. have the Kestrel, keep it on Xenotech, but have them go Weapon Kestrel out of the jungle, I think they perform extremely well. You will be just tearing through the Munions, the Wolves when they come out. Like, that's just free damage for a Crystal Vox, and it would destroy Tribe Gaming's health. Gangstars is ticking down on their bonus time here, just about 20 seconds. We'll see if they do indeed end up going with that Vox. We certainly want to make sure that they're... Uh, taking their time here and making the right decision. Ooh, Look at Scarf. That. I like Scarf. Scarf actually counters Petal, but not so good into Fortress because Scarf is really squishy mm -hmm. as a mage. Hmm. Uh, interesting draft. It's going to be off the NA portion of the broadcast. We're into the first match here. Xingyi, how are you feeling? I'm feeling, uh, you know, actually I'm a little bit under the weather, but that won't change anything today, I don't think. But... <laughs> Do you know that's the right thing you're asking about? <laughs> it's alright. <laughs> it, it, it was kind of an open-ended question. Just, it was perfect yeah. answer. Let's we have Gangstar as a, a playing a little aggression here early on, and I like it. Xenotech showing us how that level one scarf really works. Oh, what's Gwen Let's doing here? <laughs> Gwen looking for that you know, superior positioning right now. I, I think they've kind of realized they might have to concede the jungle here as Gwen moves up into the lane. And Gangstar is able to get the mid as well as the back trans. They'll take the backs, Ooh. and maybe Gwen is able to rotate to the other side of the map and take a little bit away. I think Rekt is uh, sniffing this one out, though. I love that sketch up placement that Rekt put down at the very start. It's such a clever one because it really anticipates the movement off the laner if they are going to be going to the jungle. And uh, right now, Pond Original could be facing a 1v3 right now. I don't think it's going to be worth it. He's not even going to get anything. Uh, I mean, <laughs> that, that was the deal, right? Yeah. He, he rolls the dice. Maybe he gets something. Maybe not. Uh, hello, this is uh, Gangstars, and that is a dead pawn. First blood going the way of Gangstars. Very nice I, to start things off. I don't know if they should be going for this Trian as well. I feel like it's not going well for Tribe right now. Oh no, Xenotech! <laughs> oh, I'm Xenotech. This is my Spitfire. You are E36, and you are dead status as well. Look at the synchronized death upon the fold. That I think I think that was just a very very long series of unfortunate events there for tribe just movement they're doing the right things in terms of macro play oh, he's angry just... he's grumpy oh, it's a spitfire it's a basic attack xenotech four kills. four kills in two minutes gangstars really turned up here e36 status they basically respawn like instantly because it's so low but iraqi's doros made the rotation e36 has to get out of there she this is just action right off the bat i'm loving it Oh, I'm loving it too. I just try, but I just aren't getting an opening. They're not getting their lane farm. They are absolutely not getting their jungle farm. Everything they're trying to get is just being denied by gangstars. And we're just seeing a really nice control being taken by gangstars. Their rotations are really nice. Um, Arakis are a bit in a sticky position here. They might yeah. get a kill. He should they die. Not. He they should die. He's six able to get out of there. They juggle that turret aggro very nicely. Wrecked a little late to the party, but that had a, a big impact. That dragon blood contract there. <laughs> Sorry, I was, I was coughing there. <laughs> it's okay, bless you. I like, yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay. Yeah, it did have a lot, you know, help them pick up the kill there on onto Iraqi Zara. Just have, you know, just clearing the minions, just gave the extra. And it's actually, he's gone for the, he's gone for two contracts here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's necessarily working out apart from that one instance of the Iron Guard contract. Oh, hang on, wrecked. Face checking. Yeah, wreck face check. And you see the Dragon Blood contract applied and procked off there. It's a nice bit of damage to slow the utility. I really like the item. Uh, if they can find a way to continue to make it work. Right now, things have slowed down just a little bit in the last minute or so. As Gangstars, really, they just came out swinging. They really came out swinging. I think it was, I'm going to go back to Rex, the sketch up placement he had at the start that allowed them to catch up on the original. Because if not, I think it would be pretty balanced at this point. We wouldn't be seeing this 1-4 kill score that we are seeing right now. And... I don't think we'll be seeing the deaths coming from Stasis and E36 either. So rotation-wise, Gangstars are looking really tight. They've not—I don't feel like they've not made any serious missteps so far. Tribe, I think they've got a tough time in this game. I do like their comp though. I think once we get to the level six, where we do E36 does have the tough of the pack available, mm -hmm. maybe that's when they should be starting to pick the fights. But for now, I think they just back need to back off a little bit. 
that was i mean that was my question you predicted it it was like you know what did, what did tribe do at this point right <laughs> you're against a scarf you don't want to go late game with them but at the same time they've kind of built up this advantage very quickly yeah. early on so maybe yeah you, you wait for some of those ultimates to come out try to see if you can take a fight at that point Right now, Xenotech uh, down at the shop. Wrecked, Iraqi Zero make their way down as well. Fountain's going to be picked up for Wrecked. So they're going to find Status in the jungle here. Status doing a good job of Xenotech dropping low. E36 oh. is there as well. E36 jumps in, finds the kill, but Status, will he go down? Yeah, Wrecked got that business. And uh, this is going to be them finding a little damage on the pawn. More than I actually thought. Oh. He's angry. He's he gets He's it. pissed off. And he finds the kill. Wrecked gets out of there. What a beast. What a beast indeed. He did get one kill there. He did get one kill in the Xenotech there. That doesn't actually surprise me because the, uh, the Scarf, relatively weak in the early game, if you do get the opportunity to dive onto him, especially with the Fortress there, you are going to find a quite easy time of it. But it was a nice turn right there from Gangstars. And I think that's the issue right now, is that the early game, I would say, is still heavily in Gangstars' favor, despite having a Scarf there, just because of the poke. The Kestrel Gwen matchup is never going to be an easy one, and I think because of the deficit that they suffered, suffered in the early few minutes, is really beginning to show because E36 doesn't have that fountain yet. I think about another 300 gold off, whereas Rec picked up about a minute ago. So there's a quite a big discrepancy right now between the captains, which is going to be a bit of an issue. Yeah, that's a big issue. 4 0 and 1. Rec just completely wrecking right now. Uh, the, also, this is one of the things, the double contract can set you a little uh, behind, and you really do like to win early game because of the fact that you pick those contracts up, but when it goes the other way, it does hurt quite a bit. Yeah, it does hurt quite a bit. I think E36 just having to stay out in the lane with Pond the Ridge and just to help pick up the ambient gold there. Uh, all three members, all six members in the lane so far. And uh, E36, few levels off from that attack of the pack. I'm a bit, I'm really looking forward to seeing where Rick hits that level six and gets that stuff ability. I think one of the games earlier on, we saw great, a really strong grump jaw liar combination so there's not a liar there but we can i think that was a really good example of what a grump jaw can do if mm -hmm. played you know very tactically and expect of wrecked do you think there's like is there like a clear target uh for grump jaw to to eat up here in these engagements is going to be like kind of just based off positioning and you, know, you kind of take into account exactly how the fight's developing I for, so for me, I think I'll I'll say go for status right now. I think he'll be the main target at this point in the game. Depends on how we well, the itemization of tribe. It might go on towards Pawn the original, but right now because Pawn the original has this tension ball, he's got this massive proc, um, and then you know his damage output for the next few seconds might not be as strong. So if he can just survive for that initial tension ball proc, then mm -hmm. he's not going to be that big a priority. Status should be. He's got the frost burn. He's got the ability to escape. So I would say go for him Oof. and focus on Pawn. Oh, status taking a lot of damage there. Players are going to come out of E36. They realize Gangstars have taken their mid. The fronts as well. Gangstars have dropped down as a unit to the shop. And uh, moving right back up in the lane. Really just kind of flawless rotations from Gangstars right now. I don't know if it's as much Gangstars uh, just being super clean on the rotations or if it's it was tried making some mistakes early. What I mean, whatever the case is, Gangstars have taken advantage of it. I would say Gangstars have the, just the really good rotations. I would say Tribe have been doing the right things, or they've been trying to do the right things. Just Gangstars just have been that one extra step ahead, which has stopped Tribe from doing what they need to do. And now we see that Gangstars, they've accrued this 3k gold lead at 7 minutes very nicely. Um, they've had these item spikes that have allowed them to win the team fights in the huh? mid game as well. <laughs> you so see Rex taunting of it. It's like Pawn, dude, you're, not even, you're barely tickling me. This isn't even, it's not even a joke right now. Come on. Wrecked is like just sitting on 4 and one trying to go 5 and one here. Eight minutes in. Right there you go, he's Pond. stuffed up, he's got a Gwyn. He's gonna be moving backwards, try to throw him underneath that turret. Pawn taking a lot of damage, Pawn's oh. down. Nice plays. Wrecked, dude, okay, where does the taunt now? Araki trying to trade damage out, status able to get out of that one. One shot, he gets one it. dead pedal. That is another couple of kills right there for Gangstars, and with that, that's gonna be E36 letting loose the attack of the pack, just trying to stall out Gangstars as they look to apply damage onto this turret. This is a couple kills, the turret, uh, and of course that cooldown now on that attack of the pack. Very sweet, methodical team fight there coming up from Gangstars. And I think this is the issue. When you've got a Grump Jaw, a lot of people, I feel, are not picking up the reflex boxes early. I think somebody, one of the European casters earlier was mentioning. If you've got a Koshka, you pick up that reflex block early. I feel like Grump Jaw is the same. So even though even though he's only in the, played in the captain role, you can't underestimate it because it takes you out of the fight. You can be completely displaced from the position you're in. That reflex block is absolutely pivotal in those team fights, and I think that was a really good example of it just then.
I'd like to think that Pawn is baiting them into a situation where they will take advantage later. Like right now, is it Racky getting there? No, Wrecked is there, he's hungry. He's stuffed up again. He's gonna throw E36 back as a turret shot does connect here. Status trampoline sport trying to help out his buddy as one shot comes through. Not enough to find the kill. Racky very low, Dragon's Breath on the backside of this one. And this is like, once again wrecked up on the front trying to get damage. E36 oh, on the E36. wall, E36 gets one. Status is there, he finds one as well. No, Pawn credited with the kill. Are they gonna go on Xenotag? Come on, Tribe, dive in there. Turret, oh, it drops the aggro perfectly. Tribe just juggling that turret aggro. Oh, it's just a beautiful thing. Status is here, status is low. That's gonna be some dead. combustion. It's not enough. Xenotech gets him with a oh. fire goop. Combo pods <laughs> there, buckshot to the face. This is such a messy game. It's, be <laughs> it's just that. It's so uh, clean. Uh, this game a... is clean. You sure it's clean? I think it's just quite sloppy. <laughs> Oh, when that man. that last team fight that last team fight felt very sloppy for me from gangsters and from tribe that was a really nice move from e36 jumping over the wall fortress so does nice. have a lot of damage e36 man <laughs> well we're still playing on 2.3 2. so i think the nerf hasn't quite hit him yet because we're still on 2.3 so he's still we, you know he's still got a lot of base power there with a lot of the cloth and he used it picked up the kill there and i, th I think that really helped change just turn things around there that's right he knows what he's doing right now and uh i dig that E36, he's he's always playing with style. He's always got those extra style points. Getting work done at the same time. Ten, min, ten and a half minutes in, they're going for gold mine. Immense gold payout collected once again, coming through for gang stars. Really, a, a pretty significant lead they're starting to build up for themselves here. Yeah, they really are. And um, looks like they're going to be pushing for a little bit more. So one thing, gang stars, this composition is really good at, is that they're really good at pushing objectives. We can see how fast Scarf and Kesp together they're melting down the objectives, the, like the gold mine, like the turrets. Whereas I feel that in the team fights, they might not be doing as well in a certain situation. Like Pawn the original, he's got that Sora Blade now, and he's got that Tension Bow. That's a lot of damage that he is able to output, status as well. Um, so I want to be seeing a little bit more priority coming out from gangsters and pushing objectives, avoiding those team fights, because I feel like we're beginning to see the balance shift now into Tribe's favor in terms of the team fights. But Rex, Rex right in. he is grumpy, but he did not use the stuff there. So... He did bait, oh, bait it out the attack of the pack. That's pretty much uh, a win for Gangstars at this point. We'll see. He's going to move in here one more time. Stuffed up as he's going to grab E36. Pawn taking a lot of damage, but he finds the stun. They're turning it around. The fountains have come out, and they're turning with the dragons, but Xenotech is in the front side of this fight. Uh... Somebody help him. Xeno's down. Wrecked is down as well. Tribe turning this game around 7-9. Couple glimmers coming through. Iraqi can he do it against one against two? What? Iraqi going to three. Double kill for Iraqi Zoro. Do not mess with this dude. Oh, what a beautiful cleanup there from Iraqi Zora. Pick up a kill there on all three members. Oh. I've got to say, the start, the initiation of the fight seemed a little bit iffy to me. I it feel was like me. So good. It, it, well, you know, you, I feel like the end of the fight was really good. The start of the fight, maybe not so much. I feel that E36 might not have been the best target for a wreck to go on. Um, Stasis probably been better because he didn't have a reflex block at the time. He does now, though. But just the fact that Iraqi Zora using his active camo there really well at the end, picking up the kills there onto all three members was Iraqi. one of the best plays that I've seen from him. Well, Iraqi Roro is letting out the roar as he flexes on his triple kill there. Beautiful job, Gangstars. Able to trade back and forth. Now Tribe, obviously Tribe can win these fights if they play it a little cleaner. They're, they're getting work done in these fights, trading one, two members per fight pretty consistently. They're going to have to clean it up if they want to pull themselves into a, an advantageous position in this game. They definitely do. I feel like Gangstars at the start of the fights, they're not... I feel like when... Okay, so so far I feel like they're not really getting a chance to focus. So Xenotech, he's got that he's got that broken myth in Iraqi Zoro. He's also got that breaking point as well. Um, what I really want to be seeing is before they're engaged in those fights, is having the opportunity for them to build up the stacks. We're not really seeing that so far, so which, which is why I think their damage output just isn't quite there until the very end, which we saw coming out from Iraqi Zoro so beautifully. Um, so I just want to be seeing a little bit more poking before initiating, which in the last few fights I feel just hasn't been there. Okay. I mean, that's a, that's a very fair statement. I totally agree with it. I, I, I guess it's kind of hard, right? Because if Xenotech gets in range to start poking, he's almost in range just to be engaged upon. You mark him with that, uh, the A out of Fortress, the, the the whole team just follows up on top of that. Plus you're getting slowed with the Frostburn, Buckshot coming through. There's a lot that Xenotech has to worry about. That was kind of the problem in like the last big engagement. You know, Dragon's Breath put him in ahead of his team and they just yeah. melted him. He absolutely melted. I think a little bit more mobility, maybe upgrading the Travel Boots would go a long way. So he does have that Aegis, which is great against status. But having the Travel Boots, just having that extra mobility to use 
in the drag when initiating the fights with the dragon breath would help a lot actually because right now in positioning i think they are a little bit too far forward for where i'd want them to be which is why they are able to pick up the kills because at the start of this game what was it was like something like five and zero going towards gang stars really clean fights um and i feel like i feel like they're losing the momentum a little bit because it's not as clean as it was and i actually look like about to see another one yeah they're moving forward right now wrecked he needs to get into a better position there. They, they're starting to stack up some good damage on Wrecked. Wrecked! No, no, Wrecked! He's gone down! No Fountain, no Atlas, no nothing here. And that's the Spitfire ignited with the goop there. E36 taking a little bit of damage. Xenotech and Araki hanging out, flanking their Crystal Sentry here, feeling that they have the power to do so. But this is going to mean Tri just move right into the lane, start putting some damage out onto this turret. Xenotech, Araki, they are here trying to make a defense happen. You do not want to get engaged on right now, though. Active Camo's down status. He's reflex walked through, but they turned on to Xenotech. Xeno. Xenotech's getting chased down. Xeno's low. Can they get Araki right now? Araki trades one. Araki gets a double kill. Oh, no. Well, actually, that's oh, going to be the stuff. They're throwing right back there. Hello, <laughs> Pawn. This is my fountain. Wrecked. Take him out, buddy. Rex playing with his well. food. Rex playing taunting. with his food. And, uh, hey, that's not, that's not your healing platform. You know, it's e easy mistake. Let's not. Let's. let's... People make mistakes Easy mistake. Sometimes. Easy mistake to make. That's all right. I scored I scored on a wrong basket in basketball one time, too. And, you in, did? In, in a real game. Yeah. That oh, happened. Everyone knows. It happens. You know <laughs> what I mean? Sometimes yeah. you're wrong, you run into the wrong healing platform. What are you going to do? Die. That's what's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's interesting because we are seeing Tribe getting a little bit more advantage in the team fights. I would say they're actually winning them more often than not. They're picking up the objectives. They got another turret. Yet Gangstars are still the ones sitting with this 5k gold lead, which is pretty good for them. Um, but we are reaching the point where the majority of the carries are getting the items that they need. So upon the original, three damage items there. I'm, I'm not. I'm going to count Tengen Bill, even though it's like one of the cheapest items. But everybody else, they've almost reached full build. We're just really waiting on those defensive items to come out now. Yeah, Xenodeck really starting to come together with his damage output. Serious threat. Whether you're running at a target or hiding backwards, the, the scarf is just incredibly strong. We, I mean, this is one of the things that we actually saw. Uh, you know, Fuji do with Echo Fox when they were fighting up against this Tribe Gaming uh, squad in the challenge battles, you know, because they love this pedal. And we saw, we saw the Scarf come out and actually shut them down uh, back to back, or at least a couple times in that series. Whatever the case, it's doing pretty well here. Xenotech obviously practiced up on this pick. We're almost 17 minutes into this one right now as Gangstar is applying some serious pressure. It almost feels like they're just trying to bait Tribe into an engagement of which they can take an objective off the backside of the fight. Yeah, I think they are. I think they're trying, actually, they're just going to focus on eliminating the Crystal Sentry now. I think the issue, one of the issues for me right now is that the disengagement coming out from Gangstars is not as strong because E36, whenever he sees him running at him, he just releases an attack of the pack. And it is a heavy priority for Gangstars to try and clear those moves as fast as, as fast as possible. But that's not happening. Um, and I think in the last few fights, we, what we saw is they're just focusing on Rek because he's quite slow. E36, are they going to try and steal that crack in a way they are? Oh, this gets interesting. Oh, it gets so interesting, Shingy. I am incredibly interested to see what will be happening next here. Is the Buckshot connects? Gangstar is slowed up here. E36, kind of an interesting position on the bottom side. The status looking to bait them forward. There you go. That's the attack of the pack. They are on the chase trampoline forward. Active Camo's down. Yeah, you don't want to run through that one right there. Gangstar is not able to really connect on anything while retreating there. And Erect moving forward, looking for a target. He has stuffed still. And one shot oh, on the status. So Look at that damage coming out there. Very nice. But once again, Gangstars go ahead and just push Tribe off. This is kind of fighting around their cooldowns right here. And Buckshot's going to connect. The stuff connects onto E36. Iraqi's there. They just immediately delete status. E36 is going to come out on the backside of this fight and should be easy enough to take him down. And he's going to go ahead and jump right over the top of that wall as the dragon's breath melts down E36. Now, Gangstars, what is the call? What would you like on the map? Because it's pretty much all yours. Well, I'll go for the Kraken. Personally, <laughs> which is what looks like what they're gonna do because upon the original, he's the only one that's out. Um, I don't think he should chance that one, one versus three. Probably not gonna win from that. Looks like he might be coming in to try and steal it anyway or just focus on clearing the wave. But either way, this is gonna be an easy crack in for Gangstars, and that's very bad news for Tribe because Gangstars have such good pushing power when it comes with pushing with the Kraken, especially Ooh. the Spitfires and, and the Glimmer Shots. No, that's a really good point. I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up. I mean, some of these compositions are, they can struggle at a few different things within the game, and they're just amazing at others. Scarf is so good at uh, objective taking, especially when you have the Kraken and you can just hang back, uh, use that Spitfire from range, ignite that goop. Well, let's see what they can get done here. 
Well, we're about to find out, and I think Tribe they're probably just going to focus on trying to get rid of that Kraken rather than engaging in a team fight. I... Looks like it. Let me gank stars. Starting off a couple glimmers, Spitfire not quite connecting, but turret taking a lot of damage here. Now, Tribe, how long do you wait before you decide to engage here? Choke point turret will be going down. Rex moves forward, oh, looking pong. a little grumpy. And one shot connects on the E36, calculated body block, Spitfire, <laughs> Rekt moves where he wants him. Was that the, the absolute bait right there? Aces high connects, trampoline forward, Rekt taking a lot of damage. He's gonna go ahead and get stuffed up there, try to reposition his Dragon's Breath comes out of Xenotech. Xenotech melting down, status pawn dropping though, status stays alive, so is E36, they've turned, E36 is down, two for one trade, Kraken still on the Vein Crystal turrets, and this is going to be Gangstars cleaning up, taking the ace and taking game one here. Very demanding game uh, out of Gangstars. I, I'm i really impressed out of, out of what we just saw. Yeah, I think it was the whole game, majority-wise, was very much in their favor. There were a few blips when it came to the team yep. fights. But double yeah, heal, double heal with the Black Fairy. It was a composition that prior to patch 2.3 would have just been almost an instant win. But on 2.3, it actually has not been performing well. It's lost the majority of the times it's actually shown up because of the prevalence of of uh, poison ships. There's Tribe Gaming, Xing Yi. Game one was pretty lit. Let's see what happens here in game number two. Yeah, we've seen Gangstars play this composition before with Xenotech on that Black Feather, someone he's very, very comfortable with. And this double heal, it's going to be so difficult for Tribe to try and just combat this. We won't be seeing that poison ship coming out from, I guess, upon the original. Um, just to deal with that, just mitigate some of the healing coming out from them, because it's so difficult to combat when it gets to the laser game. And if gangsters are able to just repeatedly engage and disengage and just heal back up, then the only ones that are really losing is Tribe. Oof, you, you only see one thing right now. You only I only see one thing, and it's death. For, for <laughs> Tribe to win. I do oh, think, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously strengths uh, come with this double heal composition, but I, I mean, as our analyst said, it hasn't had a lot of success here. Uh, in this last update, so we'll see what Gangstars can do. I do think the the Black Feather and the Adagio have been very successful picks. Why do we say the Lyra too? <laughs> All of these picks, are very <laughs> successful picks for Gangstars. You put it together, I don't know what what the uh, the case is. Well, I think the last. So the, if I remember correctly, the last time I saw Gangstars playing this, I think they actually lost with this composition. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's just because, so Zeno, what, was, what we were seeing was in the late game, Xenotech was just super tanky, had quite a lot of damage, was just diving straight in, and they were kind of just ignoring Xenotech and just going straight for like Iraqi Zoro instead. Um, and then you only had that one heal before focusing on Xenotech, and I think it was just heavily countered by um, like lots of Atlas Pauldrons, because when you're relying on one hero as your main damage dealer or your main frontline damage dealer, then it is, is easy to get the Atlas Pauldrons, especially if they are melee. True. That's a very good point. Well, this is a very slow game compared to game one, number one right now. Both teams just kind of uh, taking their opportunity to farm out in the lane. We're going to see Araki and Rekt go ahead and teleport back to the base there. Go ahead and grab some items, regen up. This tribe are having to deal with a uh, stacked up lane wave here. And status happily just farming up as well. I mean, by this time uh, in game one, I think we had, what, we had like four or five kills on the board right now. Yep. Just zero, zero. Pretty much. It was bloodshed everywhere. And actually, I'm gonna point out right, he's going for that Storm Guard first. I think this is the mm. few times we've seen him going for this, especially when playing that Lyra. Helps with extra push. He's, he's, you know, he's got that quite a lot of base damage anyway as that Lyra. Um, and it just really helps with pushing those objectives fairly early on because I think if you look at the Black Feather early game damage output, not great. But coupled with that Storm Guard banner, it certainly helps helps the team a lot. Well, this is really what Sweejay was talking about. Like, you want to beat Tribe before they can build up a Poison Shiv and start to have effect against you. And Rex has done this before, like you said, so he's going to get that Storm Crown up and running. And they just push turrets down. Uh, they've been very successful with this in the past. I'm so curious to see what happens here. Now, Tribe going to go ahead and group up here. They want to defend these turrets, especially when you start to see Rex build. You know kind of like what the game plan is. It becomes a little more telegraphed. Yeah, we're seeing a lot. We're, we're see, what we're seeing is Gangstars. They're moving up into the lane a lot. That obviously helps them try and push that t damage on. Sorry. Phenotech on damage. point. Bane Hart moves forward. Ooh, Ooh. he's trying to get in. He's going to be rooted up there. Nice defensive plays by E36. Pawn drops down with that Sonic Zoom, but quickly realizes that's really not a place he wants to be. Well, they forced him to back off anyway, and pawn the original a little bit low. So, right now, wrecked. He's got quite a lot of gold. E36 probably has enough of that fountain coming up soon. He's probably, we'll probably see him moving down to the shop. But because of the pressure gangsters are applying, he's not really able to do that. 
And I think it's been a bit of a worry because Gangstars, they have like two built-in fountains already. You have an Aerof Effect heal coming out from the Lyra and you've got this target heal coming out from Rakizora, which has also has that splash damage. Um, and look at the damage they're putting on the turret already upon the original, dropping low as well. Yeah, you could, I mean, between Wrecked and Iraqi, they really know exactly what they're doing with this little combination here of the double heals. Cheeky little plays. I think one thing, though, we, you know, we should keep in mind is, you know, status on this pedal actually does have his own healing mechanic as well, which can work to their benefit. So it's a little bit of an extra heal. I think a lot of times we don't really consider when there is a pedal out on the fold. Definitely true, but only happens when he reaches that level six. He's current. Oh, so he's just reached level five now. There is a little bit of time to go before he actually gets that spontaneous combustion available. But yeah, it's definitely a really important consideration to take in place. We see them using it to heal, heal up allies, as well as you know just doing a lot of damage there to the opponents. So Xenotech, he's cheeky. Oh, 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 that was cheeky. Very cheeky. Just, just yeah. <laughs> grabs that with the sigil, moves right back up in the lane. He's got the regeneration. They have the double heal. Gangstars are going to look to try and apply pressure here, but a nice impale into the Githian wall. Pawn really not able to follow up with damage. You can see a Xenotech right on their heels. If, if he was a little earlier, that's a kill. If Pawn was a little bit later in retreat, that was probably a kill as well. They're just going to look to siege here, Shingy. Status has made his way up, though. Still not level 6. E36 taking a lot of damage. Just look at this turret. Really starting to get chunked down here. Stormcrown was completed for Wrecked. Uh, so it was that, like a 5-minute purchase for him. It was, it was, I think it was already a five minute purchase, but he was the only one that was on the turret there, doing a little, quite a fair amount of damage there. I think that turret's going to go down without really many deaths oh. going down. E36! E36 had to sell Fountain there. There is no Fountain for Gangstars, but they have that double heal. Oh, Pawn, he's going to Sonic Zoom backwards. Yes. The status jump in with the trampoline. Xenotech wants some. Xenotech gets some. He's looking for more. Rose offensive forward. He gets the double kill. Xenotech's turning it up here on his Black Feather. And of course, we know, you know, we talked about it in the beginning, this is one of his major picks this season. He's really comfortable with those heroes, like, he's quite aggressive in the jungle. Actually, for this game, he's not been as aggressive, just focusing on farming up before going up to the lane for those pivotal moments when they are trying to be push when they are trying to push that turret. It worked very quickly, they got a six minute turret, they are also going to get the gold mine as well. So, stylistically, very different from the last game. That game, last game was full of bloodshed from Gangstars, just from the very start. And we're seeing a similar gold lead coming out from Gangstars, but with a very different style of play. Instead of focusing on team fights, they're focusing on picking up the objectives early on. Gangstar is such such an interesting team. I mean, obviously they're they're up in the the upper half of the overall points uh, for NA, but they're they're not up in the top two, three, and I feel like depending on the day that they play, they could be number one. But they they just like. They have a hard time. I I don't know what it is. Like it's just a consistency issue. But sometimes they just turn up on a game like this and just absolutely dominate their opponents. It's really good to see. I almost it almost feels like they get woken up. Like they'll go to sleep for a week and then they get woken up for a week. And right now it feels like they oh, are pretty woke. Infusions are out. Yeah, infusions are out. Wait for it's gonna come through. No follow up there. Let's try it. Making this rotation up, trying to make something happen. Yeah, Black Feather in their jungle. Wrecked has enough money now to go for that fountain, so I would like to see Wrecked go down and pick up the fountain before really trying to go in for a fight. But we're actually seeing a flank coming out from Xenotech. Oh yeah, Xenotech, nice positioning there. Rose offensive, he's gonna be standing in the sigil, healing up. Heal Xenotech as he jumps Oh, Xenotech get it. will go down! There's not enough healing in the world to save him. Status will fall. Pawn on the run here. Wrecked wants to chase Pawn down as Iraqi chasing E36 there. Wrecked's gonna boost himself up. Self-booster, Wrecked on stream! Oh, so and he almost comes through with the kill there. The Wrecked building into a fountain now. Yep, he's almost got the gold. He's got, I think, 400 to spare afterwards. Going for the War Treads would probably be quite good as well for Xenotech. Um, Xenotech so Xenotech, he, we saw him going for the 1v3. Very aggressive flank. It didn't quite work out, but because of Rakizor and Wrecked, they were relatively untouched in the back line. So they were able to pick up, I think, one kill there onto Status. Uh, part of the reason is Stasis, I think this is a very typical petal build for him, is that he focuses so much on just that heavy crystal damage. It works for him, um, but that means if Gangstars are able to get on top of him, it's very easy for them to pick up the kills. I, it felt like Xenotech had a godly rotation on that last engagement that his team didn't follow up with. So uh, we'll, I will watch those VODs back another time and make a, a full decision. Now Xenotech, they caught out. Atlas Baldrin applied, he's stunned up. Rose defensive here is, oh look at the arcing pass, Rectus here. Says, hello, dun, 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 dun. Xenotech, you shall fight now. Find kill, Xenotech, chase. Status is going to take the arcing passage defensively out of that one. E36 left for dead. Why, man? 
Why must you take the Lance out? 5-1 for Gangstars. Nine minutes in. Xenotech, no defensive over the wall. On point's going to connect on the status. Is he trying to really get this right here? He does take the back tree and on point there. Xenotech almost could he take it. Oh, it, I felt like he was going to pull the trigger and try to jump uh -oh. in there, but didn't quite. If he had another Rose offensive, I'm sure he would have gone for that one. Oh, right with the charms again. Have charms out? Yeah, he's coming out again. Uh, so upon the original, I don't know if he should be going in this far. I know he's just trying to get some damage down, but right now he doesn't have that poison shift. He's not able to miss get the healing coming out from them, but he do does it, do a bon. nice bit of damage. Do it, Pawn. Go, go, go. <laughs> yeah, you say no, I say go. Uh, that's where we're diff That's how we're different, humanists. Oh, they're going in. They're right, not going to go in. Right, the drama here. Xenotech connects with that on point. Pawn still chasing. Pawn, um, this is not your half of the map here, sir. Xenotech will be able to grab that mid there. Nice little reach in for him, Iraqi. Need to back up. Very good positioning. Good map awareness. Trampoline forward, but a little bit too late there, status. Gotta say, Gangstars doing a fantastic job of dodging the impales. I'm not, I'm struggling to remember the last time I saw one of those impales land. Like, E36, are, they're well projected. You know, they should be hitting, but Gangstars are just anticipating them, moving out of the way. And by avoiding the impales, it's just such a great opportunity for them to turn the fight around. Um, so... 5-1, we're sitting a 5-1 lead there for Gangstars, and they've got a nice 4k gold lead at 10 minutes. I think Xenotech, what we're waiting for him, is just to build a little bit more defense. So he's got the coat of plates, I'm expecting that to be finished going into an Atlas Pauldron soon. And maybe even the Shiver Seal to help stick, stick onto them. I know Wrecked there, his MP player. I'm ill, just forgive me. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not gonna get in there. You know, you know when you've got like that kind of like that, I don't know, brain fog, and you're like, yep. everything just seems, yep, that's what it's like right now. But I live in a brain fog. Nice silence coming out. Rose offensive forward, though, perfect out of Xenotech. He's looking for more. He wants pawn. He's gonna get it. Iraqi Zero doing a good job on the backside of this fight to have damage output and heal up his buddies. Gangstars just dominating this. They don't even care about this turret. They're like, yeah, we could we could wait for some, we'll some just minions, heal but we'll just, we'll just go ahead and take this out. I'll just ult. Easy. We'll just take it out here. Easy Katka. Easy Katka. Easy line. Katka. I know I'm stealing. You know this is because we're we're spending so much time. We're at, we're picking up each other's catchphrases. It's yeah, cute. I know. Is that a good thing? I don't know. I uh, think so. <laughs> Uh, well, they get another tarp for gangsters. It was looking so easy for them. Xenotech, I think he's he's beginning to reach his final build, and it feels like Tribe really aren't making any headway in terms of actually getting the damage down. Um, it's just what it feels like upon the original finally has that poison shift. Is it too late? I think it could be. Wow. Very and he says it could potentially be too late for you, Pawn. I I will pretend that Pawn can hear me right now. Pawn, prove her wrong. Let's see. Let's see right now. Tribe gaming. If anybody okay. can do it, Tribe can do it right now. I, yeah, I agree. Oh, status. Oh, she agrees now. It's a Rose Vincent forward. Status trampolines back. Trying to heal up the founder spontaneous combustion. Not enough. Pawn. Prove her wrong, Pawn. No, he's going to go down. So I'm right. Misses the on point. Finds the kill. E36 trying to make his way over the wall. Look at that impale. One impale to end them all. Or to keep himself alive and prevent the ace at least. Oh, they're going to get that one ring into the... <laughs> I don't know why we're going to Lord of the Rings. Um, so I feel like I should try and explain myself. The reason I was saying that was because the damage items stay stasis upon the original. They have the damage items that they need. The issue is they do not have any defense, whereas you're playing against a double heal composition who have built-in defense. They also have quite a lot of defensive capacity as well with the items they're building. It's fairly easy to see that gang stars are going to be coming on top until tribes start investing in more defense. Yes. <clears throat> really yes. not a cool situation to, to no, be No, it's in. not. It's I'm, not a cool I'm sitting here trying to imagine if I'm tribe. Like, what, I mean, what do you actually do here? The Black Feather, the way he's itemized, it's very defensive, like you said. I don't know, as he's wrapping around the right side of this fight. Look at the two man on point. Rose Offensive is going to hit two. Oh, Petal just gets wrecked. Look at the Xenotech just showing up. He's got his own poison chip. He's like, oh, I'm going to fight some uh... fire with fire. Get in there. Xenotech. Get in there. Oh, Xenotech. Where were the spidey senses? I love it. E36 getting away every single time, and it's like 0 1 1 KDA, and the status upon the original both died five times. They're just disregarding E36 completely. Um, he's not able to do too much. He doesn't have that wave clear. He doesn't have a storm crown. And that's going to be yet another turret going towards Gangstars. I don't. This is a tough situation. I mean, I'm not going to say. I don't think it's E36 not really being enough of a no, front just... line for his team, but the, the problem is. The, the, I was trying to say, like, Blackfeather is so mobile. But he's built up defense at the same time. So you don't want to aim him because you're not going to be able to lock him down. You probably won't be able to kill yeah. him in time. 
But if you go for another target, then that means Black Feather's on you, and he's doing enough damage to take you out. Yeah. So Catch-22, rock in a hard place here. It's, it's true, and also you know that Xenotech's gonna be jumping onto you if you're either Vox or the Petal. So what a really good counter would be, would be to pick up the Atlas Pauldrons. Just both of you, if, you, if they both get a Pauldrons, they can get those chains off, and that'll take a lot of his damage away. Never mind though, they're going in again. What an arcane passage coming in from Wreck. Drops the Bright Bulwark, and then just starts dropping Tribe Gaming into the dirt. It's Pawn first, status second. Now E36 will look to run away. We'll go ahead and queue up the Benny Hill theme song right now for you. I'm sure production's working on that very hard. Is Wreck going to chase him down? Combat roll into the teleport. Look at this. E30, you can't stop this. You can't take this guy out. MVP. Oh, they can't. <laughs> just for the escapes. For the pure escapes. We'll be just a little montage of Pure escapes. Now that's a team name. Pure, pure escapes. escapes. I don't know. I thought if I was, if I was going to have a team name, I'll call it like Clarion Call or something. That sounds really lame, actually. I'll just that, keep my thoughts to now myself. Now that you said it, it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Pure escapes. That all, it could also be like just a soothing soundtrack. I don't know. Maybe that's not too good in hindsight. Tribe. Look at Tribe. They just kind of force Gangstars out. Gangstars moving very defensively. A little bit surprising. They are moving very defensively. I think it makes sense. Um, they need to focus on clearing their own waves, get the jungle, because you don't want Tribe to be trying to take some of that away from them, because they are a little bit behind in terms of farm. Uh, Pawn original about 30 behind, and State is about 17, 20 behind as well. Um, but I think the majority of the goal difference is coming from the lack of tarts that Tribe and now they need to try and prevent Gangstar from picking up that Kraken, because that's the next major threat. Yeah. And it's kind of like the last game. If Gangstars get the, the Kraken, it's so easy for them to push, especially with the Lyra and Adagio. They're constantly healing up the Kraken and just setting the members of Tribe on fire. Arcane Passage. Arcane Passage, once again, he's looking for that Bright Bulwark positioning. He's going to hold it a really long time. Using that Sizzle, just going to go ahead and heal him up. It's kind of like he was almost trying to bait something out of Tribe. And uh, the tribe not going to fall for it. They're going to go ahead and move back, heal up here. Pawn's going to be forced to buy another infusion. Kind of a bummer that they weren't able to take advantage of the first infusion. But they have a moment here. And as you said, I do think the, the Kraken's really going to be uh, pretty much make or break this game. If Tribe can find a way to steal it, that would that would be their best way back into this. Uh, this is Pawn trying to run away, but Xenotex there. He's got the on point, trying to move forward with the Rose Offensive. He's locked on to Pawn. Pawn can't live through it. Neither can Status. I guess it's not even going to be a moment to even think about the Kraken here. E36 tons of Xeno. Can he get out of this one? No. Nope. This, this is the real question. E36 prove us wrong. He can't <laughs> so make it. Close. Rolls into his own healing platform. Dies right in his own base. Xenotech Iraqi. Just no mercy today. And that's another ace there, 16-2. Pretty dominant game. Just the start of it just was completely different from the first game. Just a little bit slower paced. Mm -hmm. But the objective, the, the focus was clearly over there from Gangstars. They knew what they were doing. They played that game really well. And I, I don't think Tribe can do this. No, they can't. Well, 